Hey everybody, it's Stu with Entering Into Space, and the topic today is deconvolution. And I chose some Eagle Nebula data here um, that I shot with my Richie Creechian, I think I said that right, 8 inch at 1600 plus millimeters uh, with the ASI 1600. And the reason I chose this is it, it's way over samples. Deconvolution, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of tighten up some of these areas. It's already uh, got some really good signal. Uh, it's going to tighten up some of the stars. It's going to bring out some of this uh, detail a little bit more. Uh, but we're not going to do that decon to this image here. This is um, this is the hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen data that's been combined in the 4X palette, 4X SHO. So this is the red channel, the green channel. Look at all this. Seriously, this is crazy stuff. I didn't come up with this, by the way. I found it online. Um, but what it produces, if you're trying to follow along, there's the red, there's the green, and just simple oxygen and the blue. Um, but what it produces is a, a really bluish orange kind of color tone here that I really like. Um, but what I want to do now with this image is put a luminance layer over it uh, and we're going to use the standard uh, manual deconvolution process to tighten that up before we apply it. So let's minimize it. And the first thing I want to do is I've got some really good, let's look at the individual ones here. I've got, there's my hydrogen data, sulfur data. Look at that sulfur. It's like killer stuff, right? That's incredible. And then oxygen. So I've got three really good data set. So I want to combine those what I call a super luminance. So I'm going to come up here to process. I'm going to come down to image uh, integration, image integration. I want to add files. And of course, we're not there. So let's go to RC Eagle Nebula processing. Look how many times I processed it. <laughs> so I've added my three files. I'm going to leave everything pretty much default and I'm going to combine these uh, three files here into one. Just going to hit the apply global button. And close the tool, close this rejection window here. Let's hit the uh, automatic screen transfer. And this is our three images combined into one to give us the, the to uh, leverage the most signal possible. So some really good looking stuff here. Um, and of course, I've showed you before in other videos, I like to save not only my cropping instance, but my um, dynamic background extraction instance. So this is my crop, same as the others. I'm just gonna drag and drop it. Okay, and I'm gonna double click on the dynamic background extraction. I'm gonna run it, set the division. Got tons of other videos how to do this. And so now this is my new image. Close that tool. Close the background. We'll close the old image. So here is our new luminance. Uh, this is still in the linear state. Obviously, right? Because I can kill it with the F12. That we are going to deconvolve. What's really cool, another really cool thing I've learned is you could really start cluttering up this window here. Um, and so recently I've started using workspaces. So I can right click on the image and say to workspace, go to workspace two. Oh, I go here, look, I've got a clean slate. Everybody's still connected, right? And I've got a clean slate. Cool. 
and I will need the screen transfer function. So let's move it over to workspace two. I'm going to need the histogram. Let's move it over there to workspace two. And what else am I going to, I'm going to need the deconvolution tool, of course. So let's move it to workspace two and let's go here and get started. Yeah. So first of all, we need to create some masks. And the first mask I want to create is a luminance mask because I want to only deconvolve the highlight areas. I want to protect all the background. So I'm just going to create a copy of that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take this little triangle. I'm going to roll it up here to the histogram transformation. Hit F12, that kills that auto stretch. And then I'm going to drag that triangle up here and I'm going to permanently stretch the image. Okay. There's the stretch that we applied. So this is going to be my mask. Step one. And I think what I want to do is show my histogram. Click my little circle here for a real time preview. And I want to drag this image in or drag the black point in the image. Some little words that come out of my mouth. I swear. I just want to darken that background up, protect it just a little bit more. All right, right there. So let's minimize the tool, close the real time preview. So this is our mask. We can double click on this up here and we're going to call this decon underscore mask. So we know what it is. All right. So now the next step is we want to create a star mask. So let's go in here to script. Oops. Process all processes. And we're going to create a star mask. These are my default settings. I'm going to take that large scale and bump it down to zero. My noise threshold uh, is just a little over three. And I'm going to reduce that truncation down to about uh, 0.56, somewhere in there, about halfway. That's what I'm getting at. And let's drag and drop. So these two masks that we're creating are going to tie in together to the deconvolution tool to isolate just the high signal and just the stars. So because this is a pretty small image, the, uh, these processes run pretty quick. So I like the star mask, but let's check it really quick. Let's zoom in here. Just want to check and see how much how well we're covering our stars with this mask. So I've zoomed in the star mask to where I want to see it. I want to take this tab here. You see how I drag it over? I'm going to drop it right on top of that uh, luminance mask that we made. And basically what it's going to do, oops, let's, let's adjust them. Let's do that again. <laughs> there, need to make them the same size by hitting this uh, same size button here. Let's drag it over and drop it. There we go. So now we can drag that over and just look at it. Is our star mask big enough? Yes. So you can actually kind of click them on like that and just drag it over. You just want to see that you're covering the principal portion of the stars. So I like it. So let's uh, double click on this. Let's rename it D ring. D nice. All right, so D-Ring down here, Decon Mask down here. Okay, so what's the next step? Next step is to create a PSF, and that is a point spread function on the stars. So we're gonna come up here to Process and Image and come down here to Dynamic PSF. So what do we wanna do is create a synthetic star that the deconvolution tool can refer to as the average star shape. And this is pretty boring. Uh, but what you got to do is you got to click on some stars here. You got to start selecting them. And you don't want to select big bright stars like this. You want to kind of find these little medium stars. And they're going to say either Moffat or Gaussian up here. If they're saying Gaussian, you're pretty much choosing stars that are too big, too bright. So we're just choosing these little, see how that, that one popped in because it's kind of funky shaped. Yeah, we 
we're just choosing these little stars. If I were to kill the automatic stretch, you probably wouldn't see them. See how these brighter stars are still kind of showing up? And if I restretch it, see how the how bright they are? You definitely want to make sure that you're, if you turn that screen stretch off, you're choosing stars that don't show up. It's about the best gauge I can give you. But what you want to do is select stars from all over the image. How many? Well, that depends how many you want to, how many times you want to click on this. But I can tell you from my personal experience, I like to choose at least 40 stars. I want a good mix. You're like, bro, seriously, fast forward through this crap. <laughs> I'm not gonna. You're gonna have to earn this. All right. Um, what else? Where are we at? 25. Wow, we still got a bunch of stars. Let me pick up the pace here. So I'm just going around the image. Choosing these moderately bright stars. And... Get that, that was a double star there. Yeah, and you don't want to choose double stars if you could help it. Definitely want to get some stars in the centroid of the mechanism. Name that movie. Bet you can't. Alright, 37 stars. That's good. So, let's click on that last one. We're going to hit Control A, and that's going to highlight every star that we uh, selected. And we're going to come over here to this little camera button. We're going to take a picture of it. Boop. There's our th synthetic star. Now we close the tool. Done. So PSF. It's labeled already. PSF. Put it down here. All right. Step. What step are we on? Who's counting? Tell me. Step four, I think, uh, is to create some preview windows. And we definitely want to grab this area here. The smaller, the faster the tool works. And the reason I want to create different preview windows is I want to preview different portions of the nebula. I want to see what it's doing, not only in the brightest parts, but in the darkest parts. And maybe we'll grab like this one right here. I like this little, you know, this is, do you know this is called the fairy nebula right here? Yeah, it looks more like a rat that flies, but they call it a fairy. All right, we've got three uh, previews. So let's take our decal mask, open up, drag it over, drop it on, just like that. And right click on the image, go down to mask, and say show mask. So the mask is there, it's still orange. We don't see what it's doing, but it is still doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, cool, so let's open up the deconvolution tool. Let's reset it. So trust me. First time I got into this, I was like, man, this thing is menacing, but it's really not. Let's run down through it real quick. So we've done a PSF, which is right here. So we're going to hit external PSF. That's our first choice. We're going to find it by clicking that little square, do our drop down list, choose PSF. Okay. Um, here's our algorithm that we're going to be using. We're still default at regular, regular, regular. Rick. Richards and Lucy. <laughs> uh, let's let's take that up to 20 iterations. So we're going to start right there. Our target is limited. Our wavelet regular regularization. God dang it, son. Regular is uh comes default at two. We're going to bump that up to four layers. We're going to decrease the amount of noise reduction as we get higher in our wavelet layers here. Something like that. Okay, let's minimize that. Let's open up our D-ringing. All right, we're gonna check it, yes. We're also gonna check local D-ringing. And what is our support? Our support is the star mask that we made. Remember, D-ring? D-ring! D-ring, there you go. And very, very important, we're gonna drop this down to 0.1. Okay, so what this global dark's gonna do at 0.1, is if you start seeing some ringing around your stars, you're gonna increase this, but very, very minimally. So let's let's click our preview here. All right, here's our preview and let's apply. 
So take the triangle, drop it onto the preview, see what it does. And it ought to run pretty quick because we've sampled such a small area. Okay, so Control Alt Z. Can you see it? You see the stars kind of tightening up right here? Tighten, tighten. Okay, stars are getting smaller. We like that. You can see that. It's almost like you can see the details kind of constrict. You can really see that pop out. Let's move right in here. This is the eagle, by the way. That's why it's called the eagle. It's supposed to be him and his little feeties and then his wing, like that. So before and after. So let's go over to some of these other previews that we did. Let's apply this 20 iterations. What we're looking for is any kind of dark ringing around these stars here. We want to take care of that, but we also want to see how far we can push this. So control alt delete. You can see that it's really starting to tighten up the star, especially this big star in here. Let's go back to this one. Let's bump up those iterations to 30, not 300, <laughs> back 30. Let's apply it. I think I said control alt delete a minute ago because that's so popular, but it's really control alt Z or Z. Uh, so once again, you see, man, it's really tightening those stars up. Look how much, <laughs> watch this. Watch what it's doing to these stars. Bam. <laughs> and you can start to see at 30 iterations, I'm seeing a little bit of D ringing around here. So let's bump this up to like a 0 0.2. Let's run it again. It's a balance. That's really all deconvolution. The tool is, uh, don't ask me how to explain the science of it. Just know how to use these tools. So see, it kind of took care of some of that ringing here. Let's go over here to our, this is our fairy. See what the fairy does. Uh, holding the space bar down, clicking to move the image around here. I've used the uh, Easy Decon, and Easy Decon works really well. It takes just about as long because you still have to do the PSF, you still have to do the background. It does a dynamic, uh, it does a point spread function over every star in the image. So if you've got 12 or 13,000 stars in your image, go take a nap. That's one complaint about the easy decon. And you don't have the control that you do. See, we're just tightening it up. You see how right in here, you can't really make out much detail, but there, now you can make out some detail. Can't make out much. Look at that. See how it just, it's subtle, but overall, I think it produces uh, really good results. So let's push it. Let's go back over here to our preview. Let's go to 50. You want to? Why not? All right. Let's go to 50 iterations. See how that does. And like I said, small image, so this process runs pretty quick. But when you apply it to the image as a whole, it's going to take a little bit. Yeah. Zoom up. All right. So, man, 50 iterations really tightens it up. Sure. Can you see that in YouTube land? It's almost almost like it draws a line around it here. Like it highlights it. But trust me, when you're look at that. Let's push that D ringing up. I think we're gonna go bold. I think we're gonna do 50 iterations. I've got we're getting some really good definition in our structure here. Structure definition. That's what we're shooting for. And we are super zoomed in, so you, your eyeballs aren't going to be able to resolve any of this. This like halo effect here or some of these stars. So you can just tell overall, it just tightens the image up. So I like it. Let's apply it. Let's see. So now we're going to click back out. We're going to come to the image as a whole, drag and drop it on. And our decon is done. <laughs> I cracked my fingers. All right. So we're done. So let's minimize the tool. Come up here to preview. We're going to say delete all our little previews. Right click on the image and remove the mask. Um, 
Now we can come up here to script, easy processing suites, easy denoise, understood that you could screw my image up completely. Let's select the image, image integration. That's the one we're working on here. Uh, let's go here to TGV settings. Push those down to maybe 1300 and we're going to run it. <clears throat> and this is going to be a fantastical looking image. All right, so we're done and smooth 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 i like it we've got great details our stars are nice and tight 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 thanks tuco <laughs> uh we're gonna minimize these masks that i have no idea how they're masking anything delete delete selected icons so let's open our image back up let's kill the actually let's not kill the real-time preview hit the nuclear button uh, we'll reset the histogram transformation. We're going to move that triangle up, kill the real-time preview, and drag and drop it. Minimize the tool. So let's right-click on this image. Let's move it back over to Workspace 1. Workspace 1. And we're going to open up the Curve Transformation tool. We're going to apply a pretty healthy S-curve to this image in the RGB. Lift the highlights a little bit, and we're going to pull down right about there. I like it. Cool. Let's close the real-time preview. Let's minimize it. Let's put it on and see what it looks like. You want to? I mean, you want to stick around for that? Hmm? Uh, first thing I want to do, which you've seen me do many, many times before, is open up the convolution tool. Let's blur this. Reset the tool. Create a real-time preview, and we're going to blur it. It's going to provide ultra noise reduction. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> so let's uh, do a real-time preview right here around the, the eagle and the fairy. Click in on it. Mm -hmm. We're going to use LRGB combination to apply the luminance. Reset the tool. Drag and drop. Right in the luminance, turn off the RGB. Let's push the saturation down and we're gonna push the lightness up. Saturation down means more saturation, lightness up means darker. Thanks, Pixinsight. Uh, let's apply it. What? That's pretty cool. But I think we can apply a little more darkness, a little more saturation. Let's do it one more time. And it looks a little better. Let's back off just a little bit. Right about there. We're gonna click the whole image here. We are gonna select chrom chrominance noise reduction and let's apply it. This shouldn't take too long. We're gonna apply it and then we're gonna do some chrominance noise reduction to the image. Thanks for sticking around. I know you're dying. You're like, man, I wanna see what this thing looks like, man. This eagle is crazy. Like, and seriously too, uh, this was, <sighs> This was barely even cropped, all right? This is pretty much what you see if you get an eight inch Richie Creechin at 1635 millimeters with the ASI 1600. This is what you're gonna see in your subs right on. Uh, yeah, tight, right? Got some pretty cool little colors in here. I mean, Zoom in on this thing. Stars are nice and tight. We got some really cool details. We're starting to see some of this little drop structure out of this, uh, out of the pillars of creation here. Okay. So yeah, quick video. You know me. I'll continue tweaking on this, but uh, just wanted to show you how to use the deconvolution in the linear state on your luminance. And for you guys that are shooting one shot color, same thing, right? So when you get your image in. Right, you want to come up here to this. Uh, come on, pop up the name extract CIEL component, and you just click it right like that, and you get a luminous image. Then deconvolve that, run your uh, noise reduction on that, and then reapply it to your color data. 
same thing. All the stuff, all the rest of the steps are the same. Okay. So quick video and until next time, maybe one of these days, the skies will clear and I'll be able to do an imaging video. But until then, uh, clear skies for you guys, not dealing with smoke. Clear skies for you, uh, Floridians who aren't dealing with an endless parade of storms. And then if you're getting clear skies, I'm happy for you. Keep those minds clear too.